Welcome everyone to the Student Board of Education meeting for February 24th, 2014. I'd like to have Mr. Patrone, our superintendent, lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Would you please join us? I, can't I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. This is one of the times in the board meeting when community members are allowed to address the board. There will also be a public hearing at the end of the meeting. Does anyone in the audience wish to be heard at this time? Well, hello everybody. Um, my name is Steve Beta. I'm state senator for the 9th district and it's an honor to be here today and it's an honor to, to see all your faces up there and I'm hoping you're enjoying this exercise. Uh, Mr. President, I had a question. I was at a football game recently and I happened to notice that there were some brick pavers uh, with some information on them and I was wondering if you could explain what these are and uh, also uh, if there's any other new things that are going on in the district that uh, your constituents would like to know about. Thank you Senator Beta, for attending tonight. That's a very good question. Mr. Tyler Patrone, our superintendent of schools, will be happy to outline and preside as each administrator comments on questions from the board. Thank you very much for bringing up this subject. I'd like to take, or I'd like to ask that each administrator respond to questions for their respective departments. If any board members have any questions or comments as we outline the various departments, please feel free to ask. At this time, I would like to ask our bond coordinator, Ms. Greer, to give us an update on the progress being made throughout the district. Ms. Greer. We have been very busy with the bond improvements. The phase two renovations at Roseville High School had improvements to the athletic complex, auditorium, and media center. As the resident mentioned, there has been upgrades to the athletic entrance. We have installed brick pavers at the entrance and can be purchased and inscribed with a message or memorial to a loved one or any type of recognition. A 4x8 brick paver costs $75 and an 8x8 brick paver costs $125. You can contact the athletic director, Mr. Mickens, in the in the athletic office for further information. Other improvements to the athletic complex include construction of a new ticket booth with new fencing, sidewalks to the football field, and exterior upgrades to the existing concession stand. The auditorium lighting was upgraded to match the new lighting at the Roseville Middle School Auditorium. New carpet was installed on the on both floors of the media center and on the spiral staircase. Huron Park was completed this past summer, which included renovations to the media center and classrooms on the west side of the school. The project was open for school last fall, and all work is now complete at Heron Park. We started the Patton Elementary project in April of 2013. The work includes full mechanical, electrical, and architectural upgrades throughout the school, media center improvements, a new security entrance, main office renovations, a new flat roof and metal roof on the 1998 edition, a new parking lot a, and bus drop off area, and a new cafeteria addition off the east side of the gymnasium. All renovations on this project were completed for the start of the school this past fall and the cafeteria gym were completed for the use after the holiday break. Ms. Nixon. I see the construction has came to an end at Roseville Middle School. What well, other projects are on the table for the 2013-2014 school year? The last school to be renovated is Eastland Middle School. We completed phase one, two, and three renovations for the start of the school last fall, which included relocating the main office, a new security entrance, new science rooms, mechanical, electrical, and architectural upgrades to all classrooms throughout the school. Phase four, which is the final phase of work, is scheduled for completion for the start of school in 2014. It includes renovations and improvements to the cafeteria, kitchen, and music rooms, new tile in the corridors, refine refinishing of the stage and gymnasium floors. With the completion of the work at Eastland Middle School, all the work as identified in 2006 bond program will be completed. Thank you, Ms. Greer. We have the utmost confidence in your abilities to lead us through these projects. Ms. Barthel. <laughs> Mr. Butler, while watching the governor's state of the state, Governor Snyder explained that he has surplus of money. How is that affecting the Roseville Community Schools? Ms. Barthel. I would be more than happy to defer that question to our superintendent. Ms. Gavel, our assist assistant superintendent of business and finance for the district can answer that question better than I. 
Well, the revenue estimating conference that took place in Lansing a couple of weeks ago projected more state revenue than was originally anticipated when the state passed its budget last fall. That is very good news. Now the question will be how the governor and legislator respond to this new information. At this point, we in the school community are not hearing anything about additional funding for K-12 education. All that we know is that Roseville Schools, like so many other K-12 school districts, is still struggling from the dramatic financial cuts that were imposed when the state's economy was in deep recession. You would think that some consideration would be made to reinstate some of the funding. However, we do not have any indication to date that that will occur. Mr. Lodi. Why does the state continue to cut funds to schools yet still increase demands and responsibilities for school districts? That is a great question. In the past, the value of education was placed very high in the minds of state politicians and the public at large. It seems we are living through a tough time when it is easy or stylish to point the finger at education and tell them simply to take their lumps. It seems we have very few friends left in Lansing. The public seems to be distracted with their own personal positions resulting from the procession that they have accepted some very abusive posturing by Michigan politicians. Mr. Menendez. Mr. Butler, can you elaborate on some of the improvements in technology over the past year? Our Director of Technology, Mr. Jones, can give you the appropriate details regarding some of technology projects that have been completed or are in progress. Mr. Jones. The board has recently approved technology improvements for the final two buildings needing to be renovated. Eastland Middle and Patton Elementary, the technology work will be coordinated with the building's renovation projects. The technology improvements will be the same standards that they have been installed in the previous building updates. These include classroom audio enhancements with connectivity to the teacher's computer, Kiesco monitors as they enter the buildings, GPS hallway clocks, security door access systems, and security cameras. The elementary schools will also have flat panel TVs installed in every classroom, and the middle schools will have ceiling mounted classroom projectors are, that are connected to the teachers' computers. In addition, buildings, buildings received computers and printers three to five years ago, new infrastructure hardware, switches for the data network, digital copiers, upgrades to the district core network system, storage and course switch and media cast, an auto distribution system. The installation of di district wireless access in each of the buildings is completed. We are working to, vent to venture to resolve issues with the district laptop authentication and filtering for guest network. Both middle schools have over 100 iPads stored in carts that are using the wireless access with their students. Mr. Menendez. Mr. Butler, I would like to ask Mr. Jones, what are some technology advancements that can be seen by the students and community? All Macomb County school districts are using PowerSchool as their student information system that is used to calculate grades and attendance. This system will have what is called a parent patrol. This provides parents with the access for students' grades and attendance. This tool is for parents to is for parents is being used for secondary and elementary schools. To keep informed on districts happening, please follow us on Facebook. Go to our district website and receive periodic emails through our district mail out system. Thank you, Mr. Jones, for helping to explain what technology enhancements have been made. Mr. Lodi. How have the personal office been affected by the financial losses of the past several years? We will have Deputy Superintendent Fresh answer that question. The steady and steep decline of school funding and the accompanying loss in student enrollment have forced the district to implement approximately $28 in program and staff reduction since 2004. The cutbacks in programs and services have touched every employee group, including both certified and support staff. Our seven employee bargaining units have helped us address the crisis by agreeing to major concessions, in salaries and benefits resulting significant financial hardships for staff members. The salary for every employee, even including the superintendent, has been cut below the 2008-2009 level. Ms. Miller? Have any staff members been laid off? To the extent possible. We have tried to reduce positions through att attrition. Most of the vacancies resulting from retire retirements have not been filed but it has still been necessary to eliminate some employee positions. Regrettably, we have lost a large number of student support positions, such as social workers, 
school psychologists, and paraprofessionals. Ms. Barthla? I would like to thank Mr. Fresh for his extensive knowledge about the staffing. Thank you. Ms. Scott? Has the addition of sixth grade being offered at Eastland Middle School been a success? I will have Ms. Cassidy Martin, the assistant superintendent, answer these questions. For the first time, we have more sixth graders housed in the two middle schools than in our elementary schools combined. Ms. Scott? I understand that both middle schools have received school improvement grants. Could you please explain how these grants have been utilized for the past two years? Money is available from the grant for both staffs to be trained in materials purchased in areas of reading, math, and behavior modification. Ms. Nixon? Mr. President, communication with parents is very important. What are we doing to keep the lines of communi communication between teachers and parents open? I will direct that question to our Director of Curriculum, Ms. Schultz. I'm glad you asked that question. All staff members in the district have email capabilities, which is very helpful with communication. As mentioned by Mr. Jones, the district has implemented the use of the parent portal in all our schools. We are using the mail-out system throughout the district for any parents that sign up by email. Mr. Lodi. Uh, Mr. President, communicating with parents is very important. What are we doing to keep the lines of communication between teachers and parents open? We are using our district website to share information regarding the new state cut scores for MEEP and MME. Our district website has a link to a video explaining these new scores. I encourage everyone to check this out. The website has been updated. Videos highlight what's offered for our students. Mr. Menendez. I have been reading about adequate yearly progress in the papers the last, the past, last several years. Are we preparing students adequately to reach our goals? Adequate yearly progress has taken a back seat to the new accountability system that includes the top to bottom list. This list ranks the schools based on proficiency, student growth, and the gap between the top students and the bottom students in a particular school. Schools on the bottom 5% will be listed as a priority school, and schools that have fallen in the bottom 5% based on the achievement gap are listed as a focus school. The EAA has been created by the legislate, legislator to take our schools that are at the very bottom of the academic top to bottom list. Presently, 15 Detroit schools are on the list, and Lansing is trying to expand it to other schools throughout the state. Twice the governor has taken this issue to the legislator and has not been able to get enough votes to change the law. The district has implemented widespread changes to meet the standards the state has set forth. Ms. Miller. Due to the fact that the ACT is a part of the Michigan Merit Exam, it seems a lot to ask all spe special education students to take the exam. Do special education students have to take the same required tests as regular education students? Ms. Dillon, our special education director, can best answer that question. Most special education students take the same test with modifications. Example of modifications would be taking the test in a small group or having the test read to them. There are also other forms of the MEEP test for special education students. MEEP access and MI access, which is a form of students with cognitive impairments. The students are also required to meet AYP requirements. Ms. Nixon. In our district, how are students identified as special education? If teachers have concerns about a student, they bring it to the attention of a principal or counselor. Some <coughs> interventions are put into place initially to see if the concerns can be addressed with modification in general education classrooms. At the elementary level, students might get extra support from literature coaches, math coaches, Waterford, and success based technology, etc. If process is not made over time, formal requests for testing is encouraged. The student is then evaluated by the school psychologist, teacher consultants, possibly a social worker, and or speech and language teacher to determine if they qualify for special education services. Currently, are approximately 832 stu students, or 16% of students' population, who receive some type of special education service in the district. Ms. Barthwa. Mr. Butler, have we added on to the security in our buildings and how has this been accomplished? I will direct that question to our Director of Buildings and Grounds, Mr. Ashball. The bond continues to improve security throughout the district. For example, all buildings now have security entrances that require all visitors to check in at the main office. Emergency lockdown buttons have also in been installed in all building offices. In the event of an emergency, activation will lock down entrance doors, not allowing access. Security cameras have been installed in all hallways and parking areas throughout the district along with monitoring stations at the Roseville Police Department. We continue to look at ways to improve security throughout 
the district, which includes the education of all of our students and staff. Ms. Miller. Mr. Butler, I would like to ask Mr. Ashball if there are any other projects planned that will increase security at our buildings. Yes, we are looking at all lighting throughout the district. This includes parking lot and entryway lighting at all buildings. Ms. Scott. I heard many schools are cutting transportation to sporting events. What does Roseville do? Also, how is Roseville dealing with other transportation issues? I will ask Mr. Johnson, our coordinator of transportation and maintenance, to answer that question. Roseville provides transportation to and from all sporting event sites. There are many districts that surround Roseville that have eliminated transportation back to the district from events due to budget cuts. Bus driver shortages are being experienced by many districts, with Roseville included. Some reasons for these shortages are the pay, the testing that is required, which includes, for example, mandatory drug and alcohol testing. Also, absenteeism runs high on a daily basis. Roseville doesn't employ sports drivers, so we have to cover sporting events with our regular education drivers and with the help of the athletic department we are able to coordinate this. Roseville is also obligated to provide transportation to students who have become homeless. This includes either bus transportation as well as gas cards for parents who provide their own transportation. We also have a van that picks up students who because of distance and time constraints buses cannot transport. Ms. Barthlaw. Mr. Butler, I would like to ask Mr. Johnson with the new pilot program of sixth graders being able to attend Roseville Middle School, how does that affect transportation? With these changes, we had to redistrict boundaries for the two middle schools. With this redistricting, we had to add extra stops for the sixth graders who are eligible at one mile. Seventh and eighth grade middle school students must still live 1.5 miles away from their home school. Mr. Patron, I did have one last question. Has there been any changes to the student code of conduct policy? Could you please refresh our recollection <clears throat> as to the efforts of our recent amendment to the Student Conduct Code Policy, JC, Mr. Carrick? Mr. Carrick is our board attorney. The school board amended board policy, JC, Student Conduct Code, to provide the superintendent rather than the board would hear all potential expulsion discipline matters involving special education students along with general education students involved in the same incident. The superintendent was delegated all discipline authority of the board in these cases. The superintendent was, all, was also granted all authority of the board in cases in which, super, in which a student is brought up for a second expulsion discipline hearing within the same year. The board reserved the right to hear those expulsion discipline matters involving a general education student in which the penalty is anticipated to be in excess of 90 days or in which a student is, tar is charged with possession of dangerous weapons, arson, criminal sexual conduct, and or assault on a faculty member. Ms. Nixon. Can someone give an update on the new restorative justi justice program? Ms. Martin. Could you give us a little information on how the program works? The restorative justice program is an attempt to give a voice to the victims of complex situations. More often than not, discipline at RHS follows a predictable pattern. When the offense occurs, the offender is disciplined and serves a sentence, then the offender returns back to school. Nowhere in this current model is the victim given an opportunity to speak directly to the offender. And more often than not, the problem is left unresolved and often is left to fester, becoming worse. The restorative justice program fills this gap in the system by allowing the victims and offenders to meet in a calm and controlled environment to speak about the issues bothering them. It allows the offender to hear firsthand how their actions have affected their victims and offers the offender an opportunity they often never get to apologize in a meaningful way to those they have harmed. Both sides are then allowed to have to heal having a deeper understanding of the matter. The program also offers conflict resolution between students. In these circumstances, there is often not a clear-cut offender and victim relationship. Rather, they consist of young men and women who have not been taught the proper skills to settle matters without resorting to physical fighting. Again, they are offered a non-biased control environment in which to talk about their matters of concern. Most often the parties leave with an agreement in place they both can abide by, along with additional coping skills to hopefully prevent potential conflicts. While no system is perfect, initial surveys have shown overwhelming positive responses from those who have gone through both aspects of the program. If there are no other questions or comments at this time, we'll continue with the next agenda item. Does anyone from the public wish to be heard at this time? We will now move on to nice things happening. Actually. Um, 
What we're going to do here, and this is probably the part that we enjoy the most, you know, when you're in, in this profession, the product you deal with, you never know how you've done until years later. But we do provide them in this the opportunity to acknowledge some Roseville employee that's had a marked impress in their lives. So what we're going to do is we're going to ask all the employees, d don't get up quite yet, um, to come up, stand behind the youngster that has identified you, and then they have a little something to give you and say something to you. So if you could walk up at the moment, stand behind the uh, youngster that's identified you. I don't want to see it. Math has never been my best subject. I've always had trouble understanding the equations and why numbers and letters are mixed together. My trouble with math all changed the day I became Miss Berry's student. From when I first walked in the class, I could tell I was going to like Miss Berry. Miss Berry is the type of person who's so optimistic you automatically feel happy when you're around her. Whenever I'm having a bad day, a wave from Miss Berry in the hall makes my day a little bit better. There's not a dull moment in Mrs. Ferry's class, and she never fails to make me laugh. For the first time in my life, I didn't dread going to math class, and I was actually doing well. There's something about the way Miss Ferry teaches that makes it easy for me to understand the problems. In the few times <laughs> I didn't understand the work. We go through a number of boxes on this night. <laughs> In the few times I didn't understand the work, Miss Berry never made me feel inadequate for not understanding the concept. Somehow she could always figure out a way to explain it to me so I'd understand it again. The best thing about Miss Berry is that she's just a great teacher, but she's a great person as well. The world needs more teachers like Miss Berry, and I'm really thankful she was one of mine. I, I think I'll be good. <laughs> okay, ready? Okay. Miss Hansen is a teacher, coach, and friend to many, but to me, she is that and so much more. Miss Hansen is an example of a perfect role model. She's someone I look up to and can always count on to be there with a helping hand. She has impacted my life in so many ways, and for that, I am forever grateful. She has truly made my high school years one I will. Ones I will always, for, I will never forget. The bond I have made with her is one that will last a lifetime. If I had three words to describe Mr. Mickens, they would have to be positive, determined, and honest. A person would never be able to tell that something was wrong with him because of his smile and happy attitude that stretches for miles. Mr. Mickens is a great person to talk to about anything. He is blunt and does not share a co-constructive criticism. His opinion and response will always be sincere. I recall going to his office on days after games and he would tell me everything I needed to correct and what I needed to work on. However, he would always make sure to tell me that I did a great job. Throughout my high school years, Mr. Mickens has become a special part of my life. It is very easy for me to picture him as one of my best friends. I will always trust and value his opinion, and I feel he has been one of the most significant impacts of my life. I am blessed to have such a wonderful role model, and I can only hope and wish that he will always be a part of my life. Thank you. Starting my 10th grade year, I never thought a drama teacher like Borzy would impact me throughout my high school career. <laughs> the first day of his class, I thought he was one of the weirdest teachers ever. <laughs> I mean, he uses... <laughs> I mean, he uses some of the corniest... <laughs> the corniest jokes and talks with a microphone no matter what. But he makes the class non-awkward and fun. He's that teacher that pushes everyone to face their fears. All the little games we played has paid off. Every drama class with Borzi has been memorable to me. Borzi taught me to be myself and not to be afraid, also to step outside of the box in life. So thanks, Mr. Borzi, for everything. Um, Mr. Marzak, you always brought the humor aspect to school and to the baseball field. In school, you are known as DKB. For anyone that doesn't know what that means, it's Mr. Marzak being uh, related to Don Kelly of the Tigers. Because <laughs> whenever Mr. Marzak is needed, no matter where, he'll always be there for you. Uh, 
This is, again, related to all the times Ms. Marzak has been asked to fill in for a class, no matter what the subject was. You always provide laughs and tell jokes in stress-related areas, such as school and sometimes during a practice. You are an easy coach and a teacher to talk about anything with, and I know I can count on you if I ever need anything in the future, near or far. I look forward to this season with you and my brother as coaches in hopes for a district title, maybe even more. Thanks again, Mr. Marzak. When I received my schedule sophomore year and saw that Mr. Kulo was my history teacher, I didn't think much of it at the time. Little did I know that his class would become my favorite. Mr. Kulo is a phenomenal teacher and I really enjoyed his class and grasped the material easily. Over the course of the year, he had become one of my favorite teachers and a friend as well. We can talk and joke around about anything from the topics we had reviewed in class to sports, current events, or just about anything. Since I'm a Michigan fan, I always have to give Mr. Kulo a hard time for being a Notre Dame fan, which I still don't understand. <laughs> it's too bad that Michigan always wins and I have to listen to him whine about the game the next day. <laughs> As much as I enjoy how we joke around, I especially like that we are able to talk about serious things as well. Mr. Kulo is always there as a friend and a mentor to make sure that I'm doing what is best for me in the end run. He has always given me great advice about college, my future, and anything that was troubling me. I can't express how much I truly appreciate the support and interest Mr. Kulo has put into my hockey career, which is such a big part of my life. Whenever we see each other around the hall, we stop and, we stop and say hi and see how things are going. I'll never be able to thank you enough, Mr. Kulo, for always being there for me and making high school an even better experience. It's been a privilege, it's my privilege to have you as a teacher, and I'm thankful to have the opportunity to honor you this evening. You're one of the greatest teachers and mentors I know, and an even better friend. Hello, everybody. Um, <laughs> I'd like to say anything, a few things about my sixth grade teacher, Ms. Garner. I know you may have thought I forgot about you, being that sixth grade was a while ago. But when I was asked who I wanted to honor, you were the first teacher to come to my mind. For some reason, whenever I got asked who my favorite teacher was, Ms. Garner is always my first response. I always remember your class and sixth grade as being the best. You just made it the best. Out of, you're just the best <laughs> teacher ever. <laughs> Even after all the reading you made us do, because some way you still know how to make class enjoyable. Also, you were always one of those people that I could come up to with anything, any problems in school or anything else like that. Maybe it's because you remind me a lot of my mom. <laughs> <laughs> now, I hope you never forget that you'll always be my favorite teacher. Thank you, Ms. Garner, so much for coming. It's an honor. It's an honor. <laughs> okay. The person I chose to recognize is Miss Gruitt because she is kind, caring, and an amazing person inside and out. She was my third grade teacher, but after I left her class, she never stopped caring. As the years went on and I grew up, I realized that no matter what, she would always be there for me and be my biggest supporter. When I was in the homecoming parade and as we pulled into the parking lot, I saw her standing there waving with the biggest smile on her face. That meant so much to me and I never got to thank you for being there, so thank you. Miss Gruitt is just wonderful. It's been nine years and she is the teacher that stood out. The teacher teacher that made such a positive impact on my life. I will never forget her. Dear Miss Mack, you are an excellent teacher and have inspired me to continue learning with an open and positive mind. Being my first teacher, you have taught me the basics and most important aspects of learning. Miss Mack has always cared about her students by rewarding their hard work. Miss Mack has put education first and has always cared about making it a memorable experience. I appreciate all you have done for me today for making me who I am. Okay, um, caring, displaying kindness and concern for others, encouraging, giving support or confidence, helpful, giving or ready to give help, all characteristics of a successful teacher. I've only known you since my junior year, but you've became one of my favorite teachers very fast. I wish nothing but the best for you and your family, and though my high school career is coming to an end, I'll never forget you or everything you've taught me. I've chosen Ms. Avec as a teacher that I would like to recognize because of the work that she puts in to help every student succeed. Ms. Avec divides her time into helping each and every student achieve greatness. To me, she is one of the realest and hardworking teachers. 
I was one of the fortunate ones to have her as my social studies teacher, not only 7th grade, but 9th and 10th grade. I haven't always been the best student when it comes to social studies, but I just found myself excelling once it came to Miss Levesque's class. I don't know what it was about her class, maybe the way that she set it up, or I don't know what she did, but I don't know. <laughs> I, just, <laughs> I, always, I always found myself excelling. Every single day it would be the same repetition. We would come in, we would do notes, and then we would get our worksheet, and then she would always, I would remember her always asking if anybody had any questions. And that's what, that's, that was a question when, the, when I first had her class, but like four weeks into me having her class, it would always be, does anybody have any questions, Jeff? Because, <laughs> <laughs> because I definitely did not take that question lightly. I would come up probably every, every two minutes and ask her if I got the question right. <laughs> But I, but I know after every time I did my worksheet and I turned it into her, she would always be kind enough to check it. And I just appreciate Ms. Levesque helping me with my work ethic. And she really did give me the great, great confidence boost knowing that I could excel in school with some help of the wonderful teacher. Tonight, I am honoring Ms. Coleus. There are many reasons why she should be honored, but I'd like to highlight a few. For instance, when I was in 10th grade, I can remember her talking about student assembly and how much fun it was and how it was a great experience. That's what caught my attention to join, and now I'm the senior vice president because of it. Mrs. Coleus is probably the happiest person I've ever met. Every time I see her, she has a smile on her face. Back when I had her as a teacher, I can remember how uplifting she was. Mrs. Coleus wants every single person to do great, and I know she would be willing to help anyone to do it. Her passion for teaching is one, is on a level of its own, which is the reason she won Teacher of the, teacher of the Year. Honestly, I'm honored to be doing this for her. I'm very thankful for meeting Mrs. Coleus. I wish there were more people like her. Thank you for all you do, Mrs. Coleus. I would like to take this time to honor Mr. Hanson. Well, where can I start? We go all the way back to seventh grade on Team B where Mr. Hanson was my math teacher. He is one of the most extraordinary math teachers any student could ask for. This by showing problem after problem until you get it or offering one-on-one -on -one tutoring after school. Through the years, Mr. Hanson and I have remained close friends, helping me with trig, algebra, or even giving me some college advice. In numerous ways, Mr. Hanson has had a positive impact on my life. For this, Mr. Hanson, I would like to say thank you for all you have done. Impact. What is that you ask? Impact is an effect or is in something that has an effect on someone or something. And I'm here to thank you for the impact and the influence that you've had on me these past four years of high school. Always checking up on me, whether it was my track career or my school. Outside life in school, it didn't matter. You were always there. I would just like to thank you for always being there, never looking down or making me feel unwanted. Mrs. Sahar, for the great and everlasting impact and the influence that you had on me to keep going and become something great. Thank you. Tonight I'm honoring Miss Castle. She was my kindergarten teacher at Heron Park Elementary. Miss Castle has taught me a lot. She has made me enjoy school. I've always looked forward to going to school. A couple weeks ago I went and job started job shadowed her at Steenland. Going to her classroom brought back so many memories, like teaching me how to write my name, learning my colors, letter of the week, and also read Miss Wishy Washy. <laughs> I, always <laughs> I feel like as kindergarten teacher, they build you into how you, how you can enjoy school. My favorite memory with Miss Castle is cupcakes. I also, <laughs> I always brought her cupcakes in her school on my birthday, and my mom would always make sure I had an extra one for her. When I was in sixth when I was in sixth grade, she made me promise I'd come back and remember her. So this year, my senior year, I decided it was time to pay up. I went back to kindergarten this year and gave Miss Castle a cupcake. <laughs> <laughs> so it's very important to make sure that you always remember the elementary school teachers because they put a big impact on your life. So thank you, for Ms. Thank you so much, Miss Castle, for putting an impact on my life. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
When I first entered the doors to Roseville High School, I never knew I would meet a teacher that would impact my high school career and life as much as Madame Bourgeois has. I've had her as my French teacher for four years, and I know for a fact I would not have pushed myself as much or even continued on with French if Madame wasn't the teacher. Every year, the classes got smaller as more and more kids decided not to take French. And every year, I got closer and closer with both my classmates and Madame. Madame doesn't just teach, she helped our class become a family. I feel like I can talk to anyone in my French floor class and have a conversation with them. Can we all get along? And to my knowledge, I don't know any or I don't know one person who doesn't like another in the class. Madame pushes me like no other teacher I know, and I feel like I can talk to her about anything going on in my life. I can't say that about a lot of teachers I've had in the past. There are an exceptional few. <laughs> um, she has made French enjoyable along with making it fun to come to class and see my other classmates. Without her pushing and willingness to help, she's not, oh, with her pushing and willingness to help, she's not just my French teacher, she's like a second mom, and I can't thank her enough for being my prof de Francais. In my Asian school, Miss Olesiak has been more than just a counselor. She's been a friend, a director, a den leader, and a role model. With every character I portrayed in her production, she's been nothing but supportive. I'll never forget in seventh grade when she handed me a styrofoam cake covered in chocolate frosting and told me to shove my face in it as hard as I can. <laughs> I'll always remember everything she's done for me in my days at Roseville, and thank you. <laughs> Every day Mr. Zimmer comes to school with a smile and every day he has a new way to teach us what we're learning. If there's ever something he doesn't know, he will take the time and look it up. And, and, and if you need help, he makes it that you're so comfortable in his class that you're not afraid to ask questions. I chose Mr. Zimmer as my teacher to recognize because he's honestly a teacher that lives up to his potential every day. We read the vision every day in school, but no one really knows what it means or what it looks like. Our vision says a school where all students will achieve their full potential. But why can't we apply this quote to our teachers as well? Because in all honesty, it starts with our teachers. Without good teachers like Mr. Zimmer, how would we be able to achieve anything? When I think of our vision, our say it on the announcements, I think of him because he is someone who is a role model and a father, a teacher, but most importantly, my hero. Wow, huh? <laughs> uh, I guess we wish you could package this and give it to Senator Bita so he could take it back to Lansing. <laughs> And when they want to take shots at public schools and talk about just test scores, this can't be measured by a test score, and this has an impact on these kids' lives. Um, maybe as we're going to have one more thing, if these employees could come down, maybe you could give them a hand as they're coming down. As a final thing, I'd ask that all the counterparts to these individuals maybe could come up and stand behind them so you could see what's with your, your youngster most of the day. You're not supposed to, you just tell her. Like, <laughs> You're going to hear this many times, but it's something you really need to understand. Every year we say, what a great group of kids, and then the next group comes along. <laughs> this, you all should be proud. This is really a nice bunch of young people. Our country's okay. <laughs> Yeah, just introduce yourself and who's with you or who's not here today. 
Should I stand up? Sure, you can. Okay. Um, You'd like to. I'm Marissa Gavel, and I'm here with my mom and dad. Great. Okay, I won't say that. Um, I'm Cassidy Martin, and I'm here with my parents. They're back there. My name is Mykena Scott, and I'm here with my mom. My name is Amber Bartholo, and I'm here with my boyfriend, Joey. <laughs> My name is Tyler Patrone. I'm here with my mom, my dad, and my brother Justin. My name is Michael Butler. I'm here with my mom. My name is Jesse Menendez. I'm here with my mom and my stepdad. I'm Deja Nixon. I'm here with my dad. <laughs> My name is Rafael Lodi. I'm here with my parents and my two sisters. My name is Tyrese Miller and I'm here with my mom and my boyfriend. My name is Jeff Fresh and I'm here with my dad and my girlfriend. My name's uh, Jacob Carrick and uh, here's my mom over there. Wendy Carrick, give a round of applause. My name is Brandon Nashbaum. I'm here with my mom. My name is Stefan Jones. Well, I was here with my mom, but she had school. So. <laughs> my name is Samantha Dillon. I'm here with my parents. My name is Julie Schultz, and I'm here with my mom and my wonderful boyfriend. <laughs> I'm Nicholas Johnson, and I'm here with my mom and my girlfriend, Sarah. My name is Brianna Green, and I'm here with my boyfriend. <laughs> Couple things. <laughs> Maybe not. Couple things. Um, rain, snow, cold weather. We finally got everybody together. Thank you for your patience and for us for letting waiting for us to put this program on. Um, it's going to be on cable TV. It's being videoed tonight by Joe Janae. Joe in about a week or two. So you'll be able to make copies of this, and when they're 30 years old, you can show them what they looked like when they were in high school. Um, at the late 1990s, the athletic director, Mr. Brian Bleasdale, who has passed away, came up with this idea. And put on your memory cap, all of you, and mine's a little longer than most of yours, but I can still remember back to high school, to grade school, to middle school, my favorite teacher. And I bet all of you can think back and have a favorite teacher that influenced your life. The common denominator that I believe exists is that the teachers made learning fun. And I'm very, very proud of our teachers here inside of Roseville and all of the staff members that have been recognized tonight. Um, young men, young ladies, and you are young men and ladies, you're no longer kids or students. Um, you did a very, very good job. It was a pleasure spending the day with you. Um, kind of interesting, but a very, very interesting day. <laughs> and I thank you for your part in the, the program tonight. Teresa, would you like to? He remembers his teacher, but I had nuns, and I'm not too sure about that. I have to think a little hard on that one. <laughs> They're nothing like the teachers we have today, I'll tell you. But the kids were fabulous today. They 
they were so afraid they weren't going to do well and they didn't even make mistakes and they were just very proud of them all. And I hope you all had a great time because we had a great time with you and you learned something I hope too. And I think after that you just have one more business to, to do and you're out of here. So go ahead. We must now make a movement to adjourn or a motion to adjourn. I make a motion to adjourn. Ms. Nixon makes a motion to adjourn. I second that. Men Mr. Menendez seconds that motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. <laughs> All right.